This is a drop of water falling on a super hydrophobic surface. And this is a drop of water falling on a super hydrophilic surface. We're going to be learning about super hydrophilicity, lovers of water. We'll see that these often neglected substances can have some amazing applications, like walls that can't be spray painted, or a surface that can wipe away permanent markers like their dry erase markers. I'll even be seeing if it can wipe away the messiest stuff on the planet that's been responsible for destroying my garage floor and countless surfaces, ferrofluid. And we'll even be trying to turn a super hydrophilic surface into a hydrophobic surface. But first, what do these terms even mean? For something to be hydrophobic, it has to have a contact angle with water greater than 90 degrees. For example, kale leaves are naturally hydrophobic. In fact, they're super hydrophobic, meaning that their contact angle is close to 150 degrees from the surface. So water beads up on it almost into a ball. So if hydrophobic means a large contact angle with the surface, then hydrophilic means the opposite. I have here a super hydrophilic surface. Watch what happens when I put a drop of water on it. It just completely flattens out. The contact angle is less than five degrees. That's why it has the name it does. The term philic is derived from the Greek word phylos, meaning loving or friendly, and hydro meaning water. So the term literally means lover or friend of water. And we can see how much it actually loves water. I can draw on this surface with a permanent marker and let it dry. It's on there. But because it loves water so much, if I just sprinkle water on the surface, the water will actually slide under the permanent marker and lift it off the surface. So it loves water so much it'll push off the permanent marker. But why does it love the water? What I mean by that is that the water is attracted to the surface electrically. Water is polar, meaning that the electrons on the molecule aren't spread out evenly. The oxygen molecule attracts the electrons more than the hydrogens, so it leaves the hydrogen atoms more positive than the oxygen. So if water meets another polar molecule like another water molecule, it'll be attracted to it. That's why water loves to stick with other water. But it'll also be attracted to any other polar molecules. So if the surface is coated with polar molecules, it'll be attracted to that surface as well. What's interesting about water being able to wipe away the permanent marker is that it looks very similar to the trick I did a long time ago where I showed you how to draw on water by drawing on a smooth ceramic plate or glass with a dry erase marker. And then when you pour water on it, it floats off the surface. That's because the water can slide in between the release agent and the ink. And since the ink is less dense than the water, it floats to the top. So all you need to do to get a permanent stain off is to let water slide in between it. Let's try some other things that seem pretty permanent, like spray paint. So let's say I'm still mad at Neil deGrasse Tyson for being an accessory to demoting Pluto. So I want to go spray paint Pluto on his wall, but he happens to have this special hydrophilic substance on his wall. Okay, so it's dry now, but let's pour some water on it and see what happens. Okay, I'm not sure if this will actually come off. <laughs> okay, it's not floating to the top like the permanent marker did, but... Hey, if you scrub it a little, it comes off. Okay, so that didn't quite come off as easy as the permanent marker. I think because the paint sinks and so there's nothing to lift the paint up to, for the water to go underneath. But if you scrub it, you can get the water to go under there and it comes off just fine. Now let's move to the fluid that stained more things in my lab than anything else, ferrofluid. Ferrofluid is dark, very non-viscous like black ink. I've made so many messes with this and ruined tables and concrete and clothes. So let's see what happens if I put some ferrofluid on the surface. Okay, now let's pour some water on it. Whoa! No way, it just takes it right off. That is so cool. The water easily slides in between the oil and the surface and the oil just floats to the top. In fact, you can see it just leaves behind the nanoparticles of iron that give the ferrofluid its cool properties. So this stuff is pretty amazing, but now let's see what happens if I try to spray a super hydrophobic coating on the surface. Will it actually repel water? 
or will the water slide in between? So I'm going to apply some super hydrophobic fumed silica. This is an easy way to make things really hydrophobic. So I'm going to be wearing a mask during this. I don't want to breathe this. Okay, let's see if this worked. Well, it's like hydrophobic at first, but then it's not. So it kind of just looks like a normal surface. So instead of a super hydrophobic surface or a super hydrophilic surface, I've made a super normal surface. But if I wipe it off, then it's back to being super hydrophilic. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you learned something. If you like this video, remember to hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider subscribing and hit the bell so that you can be notified when I release my latest videos. And thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.